Thank you, Rita, for that beautiful uh, prelude, welcoming us to worship on this Lord's Day. Glad you could join us as we begin our worship with praise and thanksgiving. That's the name of the song. Let us join in.
Special welcome to our guests and visitors with us. Glad you could join us today. Also those streaming online, welcome to our worship this morning. We turn to God in our morning prayer. I'll read the uh, light print if you'll read the bold. Oh Lord, I cry to you for help in the morning. My prayer comes before you. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless God's holy name. You redeem my life from the grave and crown me with mercy and steadfast love. Lord, hear my prayer. Let my cry come before you. Our next hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Let us be mindful of the many who have been affected by Hurricane Ian this week. Let us join together in the prayer. Benevolent, merciful God, when we are empty, fill us. When we are weak in faith, strengthen us. When we are cold in love, warm us, that with fervor we may love our neighbors and serve them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, kids. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up and uh, somebody want to hold that for me? What do we got here? How did you know that? It says it on it, yeah, and what do you use mustard on? Hot dogs, yep. Yeah. You like them on hot dogs? Anything else? Ketchup? 
uh, onions, pickles, but mustard, you got, how about bratwurst? You gotta have mustard. You know where mustard comes from? Look at here. What's in there? Can you take one out? Can you hold it up for all the people to see it? <laughs> Can you see that mustard seed? Yeah, they can't see it too good, but I can see it. They're pretty small, aren't they? And just think, there's a mustard museum in Wisconsin. I'd like, I gotta go there sometime. Anybody been to the mustard museum? How is it? You get hungry there? I would think, yeah. So, little seeds produce a big jar of mustard. Now, what does that have to do with you and me? Well, sometimes we feel small, don't we? Or weak? It's like we maybe can't do anything or anything big, but Jesus said if you have faith like a mustard seed, now he was talking big, he said you could move mountains. He didn't really mean move them, but you could do big things like that little boy. All he had was five loaves of bread and two fish, and there were thousands of hungry people. And Jesus said, could I have that bread and fish? And the little boy said, yeah. You know what Jesus did with that? He fed thousands of people just with the five loaves and two fish. So don't think you're too small or your faith is too small to do big things. Let's pray. Lord, bless all these children and all of us today to have faith even as a mustard seed so we can accomplish big things for you by loving you and serving and loving our neighbor. And all God's kids said, Amen. Bless you as you go off to Sunday school. And remember to put the mustard on your hot dog today, okay? <coughs>
Our second reading is from 2 Timothy 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until the day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Here ends the second reading. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you, think, do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Thank you, Kevin. Let us pray. Lord, help us to uh, do what you call us to do without looking for fanfare or praise from others, but simply for the sake of the joy of serving you, knowing that you call us to follow in the footsteps of your son, Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve. We pray in your name. Amen. Well, we're reminded again this past week that on this earth we have no abiding city as Hurricane Ian has brought its death and destruction to way too many people in the Gulf waters from Cuba and Puerto Rico to Florida, other islands up the East Coast. The number of people who have died is still not known, but it's too many. People missing, still not known, but too many. Homes destroyed, businesses, beautiful beaches destroyed, all in one swooping storm. On this earth we have no abiding city. Man knows not his time, the Bible reminds us. Gordon Lightfoot wrote a song 
after a storm had taken down a ship called the Edmund Fitzgerald. And he writes in the song, Where does the love of God go when the minutes turn to hours? Where does the love of God go when the waves turn the minutes to hours? Or Gilbert O'Sullivan, who in the aftermath of losses and death amongst family members would write, talk about God's mercy, but where is it now? Uh, alone again, naturally, he writes, after many losses, alone again, naturally. If God really does exist, why would he desert me? In my hour of need, left again indeed, alone again, naturally. It's a haunting song. It's a depressing song in many ways, very sad, but we know for many of us, those feelings arise in times of storms, tragedy, in times of loss. Yeah, where does the love of God go? Why have you deserted me? Are honest, heartfelt expressions from all of us in times of trials and difficulties. But then there's that beautiful poem, Footprints. Many of you know it. Maybe you've memorized it. Where the traveler is walking along, looking back at the footprints in the sand. And for a long time, there were two sets, the traveler and God's. But then the traveler sees only one set and says, God, where were you when I needed you the most? There's only one set of footprints. And then the Lord speaks, son, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When you see one set of footprints, those are mine. When I was carrying you, when you couldn't carry yourself. Victor Frankl has said, we can't control things that happen to us, like storms, like sickness or death. Frankl lived through three concentration camps during the Holocaust, but he said we can control how we respond, like the rescue and search teams in Florida, up 24 hours looking for people to save or to recover bodies that have already died. We can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we respond. And today we hear from the psalmist, who with his people had lived through hundreds of years of slavery in Egypt, who had seen neighboring countries invade their own, destroying their temple, destroying their holy city, exiling people all over the world, never to be seen again, family members and friends. And yet the psalmist could write, and it was part of a songbook and still is for, for all of us, put your trust in the Lord, commit your ways to the Lord, see what God will do. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That's about the best invitation any of us can get. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you and me the desires of our heart. Not necess necessarily things or money or possessions, but things like joy and peace and love and hope that God gives to us freely. Yes, sometimes it's hard trusting in God, very hard. And Jesus would remind us of that when he said, in the world you're going to have much tribulation. Be prepared for it, but be of good cheer, he said. Be hopeful, be joyous. I have overcome the world. So put your trust in me, Jesus says. Come unto me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest for your souls. I can still see their faces, my three children, when we were teaching them to swim, which you have to do if you live in Minnesota or Wisconsin. You got to learn to swim early. <laughs> A lot of lakes. And I could still see him as I stood in the water, chest deep, whether it was a swimming pool or the lake, 
and they're on the edge wanting to jump in, but wondering how will it all work out? Will daddy catch me or let me go in? <laughs> well, of course, I'm a good daddy. I could see him jumping in, coming up with the water running down their face with, with a smile. I did it. I did it. I jumped and it's okay. Or the first time I daughter took the training wheels off her bike. I remember giving her a little push, hanging on for a little wise, and then letting go, and all of a sudden, she looks back like, I did it. That's what faith is like. It says, the psalmist says, put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. He'll give us the push. He'll be there to catch us. He's a loving mommy and daddy who says, come to me. Rest in me. Jesus called God Abba, which is the Aramaic for daddy. An intimate relationship, which God wants for you, for me, for all of his children. The storms will come. We know that. Literally, Figuratively, they come in our lives. In the book of James, James writes to the people then and today, Consider it joy, my brothers and sisters, when you fall into various trials and temptations, because the testing of your faith will work patience, and patience will work endurance. Endurance will work character in you. Character will produce hope, which does not disappoint us. So the message is, hang in there. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do, not just for you, but for others we can impact with the love and passion that Christ gives to us. So, Lord, help us today to see opportunities to have our faith growing even through the tests and trials of life. And we know that there's nothing in all of creation that can separate us from your love, not life, not death, nothing at all. Thank you for holding us close now and forever. Amen. Let's join together in singing. Lord of all hopefulness.
one way this congregation reaches out to people who might be wondering uh, where the love of God has gone is with these beautiful quilts and kits put together by our women over the year. And they may very well go to some of the people affected by the hurricane. And they're a sign. They're a sign, like a sacrament. They're a sign that God is not abandoning you, that God is with you. So let's pray for the quilts and the kits. Let us pray, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. You have blessed us with so many gifts, a good eye for color, the ability to make fine stitches, the skills to develop ever new and exciting patterns. Now we offer the fruits of our labors, the quilts we have made to you. We dedicate these quilts and kits to your service, trusting that your love will go wherever each quilt and kit is sent, making it more than just a piece of material, a collection of items, making each piece we have created an expression of love. There is no way for us to image the power and effect an act of love can have on a person's life. How you can make something as small as a quilt, a baby care kit, a school kit, to radiate your love from us to the world. May these be used in your service and become blessings for all those who receive them. Lord, we know that we all possess comes from your loving hand. Give us grace to honor you with all of our being. Draw our hearts to you. Guide our minds, fill our imaginations. Control our wills so that we may be wholly yours. Use us as you will, always to your glory and the welfare of your people. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll receive the offerings unto the Lord. The noisy buckets go to help our youth and family ministry. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you've first given us, ourselves, our time, our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us in the world, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, 
This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And when you pray, pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There's gluten-free uh, wafers in the center of the bread tray for those that need. There's wine or grape juice in the center of the wine tray for those that prefer. We'll do communion continuously with two lines. Receive the elements. You could put your empty cups in the baskets on either side. And we'll, we'll be singing a, a song of trust, The Lord is My Shepherd. All are welcome for the Lord's Supper. Please be seated. Communion stewards, please come forward.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to heal us and forgive us, to unite us and strengthen us and keep us in your grace. And today we pray especially for your grace and compassion to be known throughout the world where people call out for peace, for justice and comfort and hope. We pray for the poor and hungry, for the refugees and immigrants. We pray for those caught up in the strife and violence of war, like our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, and speed the day when there's peace and justice for all. And bless all the peacemakers who stand in harm's way today for the sake of justice and peace. Especially our heartfelt prayers go out for all those affected by Hurricane Ian and use us to support our brothers and sisters in need wherever they are today. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord, the great healer, who we lift up before you those we know to be ill and hospitalized, facing and recovering from surgeries or undergoing treatments, those who mourn the death of loved ones. Comfort us, give us hope, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Lord, bless us and keep us Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with favor and give us your peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Vicki, you wanted to make an announcement. Vicki Anderson, one of our quilters and uh, one who helped spearhead the putting together of the kits and the quilts and boxes, which will be shipped off next week, I believe. Hi, everyone. You look all so good. Um, I'm here to give you the kits and quilt count, but I need you to also say that the women of this ELCA, our mission is to mobilize women to act boldly on their faith in Jesus Christ. And our women in this project of Lutheran World Relief they go above and beyond, our quilt makers. We have silent people that come and help people that don't even belong in our church that gives. 
So we are very, very grateful. And you heard my name is Vicki Anderson, and Lois Hartman is also my helper in this task of stewardship for uh, organizing quit quilts and kits. We have, are, they're all sitting out there to be shipped out, and thank you, Robert Carlson. Thank God for him for all his hard work he does for us women. Uh, uh, we have 160 quilts um, being shipped out, 42 baby kits, 60 school kits, 34 health kits, four sewing kits. The sewing kits is fabric and, and thread, and that's for the women for, to earn money. They use these fabric and kits to make items to sell, and they provide for their family. And uh, uh, 31 uh, baby blankets that were too heavy to put in the uh, uh, kits. And uh, uh, eight, uh, between 24 and bigger sweaters that were too big to put in the kit, kits. And so now that, uh, so, so now we shipped out 140, but 10 goes to Food Shelf, five goes to Benjamin, uh, five goes to the nursing home, and eight we ha keep on hand for whoever is in need of a quilt before we start making them again. So, we would like to thank everyone that has donated sheets and receiving, uh, I want to say uh, fabric, uh, you know that, well, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, the money for batting. That helped us out a lot. Without the money donated for the batting, we would have not been able to achieve our goal and every year it's a new goal, but we're thankful for it. Yeah. So anyways, um, we, are, we have more than enough sheets now for quilts. So um, we're not quite collecting sheets or flannel sheets, flannel sheets for the diapers and receiving blankets. We're not collecting it now anymore. Uh, and, and we appreciate it, uh, your giving. And uh, I, I just want to thank everyone for your prayers. I, I'm getting stronger and stronger, and I'm, I'm going to beat this mess. But today, I, I need you to know that our, my dear friend, our dear friend, our dear sister in Christ, Sonia Knudsen, her quilts are on the, on the, on the altar. She has a signature quilt in it, and well, um, we are grateful for her service in in Welka. Now, I did ask Donna Limbaum, how many years have we been doing Lutheran World Relief? And so far, the count has been around 70 years. And how old is the church? <laughs> huh? We're going to turn 150 next month? Year. Year? Wow. Well, anyways, um, <laughs> this, this mission that the ladies serve and not just the ladies, if it wasn't for you men and, and the kids, the kids help us. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this for other countries. Now, when you go downstairs to this door and you turn left, you'll notice on the bulletin board on the bottom uh, left-hand corner is a map of where the kids go. Every year they go different places. Now, 
We have heard that our, some kits and quilts are going to go to Ukraine. So I just want you all to know that the seeds that we have for next year, like when you said the seeds, we have seeds for next year for the, these kits. And we'll be asking for more seeds this year. So thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do for the women of the, the, the Lutheran World Relief. Thank you, Vicki. That's a heartfelt thank you, and we do continue to pray for you and your, your recovery and health and renewal. Uh, just an announcement about picture directory. If you didn't get your pictures in the mail yet, uh, that's the free one, right? Yeah. Call the church office. We'll make sure you get it. And if, if your name is Sue and your picture is John on it, we'll let us know about that. We'll switch that around, too. Uh, that's, I think, happened a few times, so... Um, some of us would like a different picture, but we can't do that. <laughs> Captain, do you have an announcement? I call him Captain Darrell. He calls me Lieutenant, so you know where, the, where I am in the pecking order. <laughs> I call him Chief. <laughs> uh, just a quick update. You've probably noticed we haven't heard the organ lately. Um, the council, exec committee, I mean, the other day, um, we received an offer or a bid to get it fixed. So I just wanted you to know it. it's in the works. They're going to have to dismantle the whole pipe system and clean everything. So it's not cheap, but um, thanks to your giving for the parking lot, we have a couple bucks left over. We're going to put it towards that you know, to get us going. Number two is the parking lot. Some of you have noticed a couple of spots there have not stuck and they're falling out. Um, we've talked to the company. They're going to maybe in the spring. Um, their schedule is really tight right now, but they're going to come back and fix it. So just keep us advised of what you see. If you see something that needs attention, let us know. Thanks. Thanks to Rita for playing today and uh, Rick and Kathy for getting us on the web. And thanks for our kids helping out with our closing hymn. Uh, we'll, we'll wait a minute, Rita, so they get and come on up on the dance floor.
Let's hear it for the band, huh? Go in peace, serve the Lord.